From Connery to Craig, six actors have uttered one of the most famous lines in cinematic history. My name is Bond. James Bond. James Bond. Bond. James Bond. Bond. The name's Bond. James Bond. And long before the latest instalment, No Time to Die, reached cinemas, the hunt was on for Bond number seven. Everybody has an idea of what Bond should be, of what Bond is. I don't think Bond will be played by an actor of colour. I don't think Bond will be played by an actress. Whatever happens, it's going to upset some people. Remember when Daniel Craig got the gig 16 years ago? After months of speculation, the new James Bond has finally been unmasked. And his name is Craig, Daniel Craig. The 37-year-old actor is the first blonde Bond. Blonde Bond. Are we ready for the first blonde Bond? The blonde Bond even had his own doubts. And I didn't really want to do it because I thought I wouldn't know what to do with it. You know, when Craig was announced, he, he came up the Thames in, in the Royal Navy powerboat and he had his sort of long-ish flowing blonde hair. Dr Ian Kinane is the editor of the Journal of International James Bond Studies. Yes, there is such a thing. He's a I think people really resisted in the mainstream press, certainly in, in, such in the a UK, way. really resisted to this idea of, of what Bond is. The tabloids were brutal, predicting the only thing Daniel Craig could kill was the Bond franchise. That was before anyone had seen Casino Royale. Sean Connery for a lot of people was the best James Bond until Daniel Craig came along. Sydney Morning Herald and Age film critic Gary Maddox recently revisited the Bond legacy. I watched the first 21 Bond movies in 21 days for a story. So, who will be the next 007? Gary is only certain of one thing. Yes, I think the next James Bond will be male. Ian Kinane agrees. It has survived this long for particular reasons and ingredients, and I think that the sort of male action-led uh, franchise is one of those. After that, it's anyone's guess. Deb Patel, I think, is such a fantastic actor. Oh, Liz shut Arnold, up. Who's, uh, in The Sound of Metal. Yeah, Reggae Jean Page from Bridgerton. It's Richard Madden. It looks the part. Tom Hiddleston, Tom Hardy. I think Bond will be likely to be played by someone in the vein of Jamie Bell, or perhaps James Norton stepping into that role. Bullshit. I've never experienced anything like it before. The critic and the academic have had their theories. Well, well, well. Marshall, Steve Marshall. But what about? The name's Spear, Jake Spear. The name's McClellan, Brandon McClellan. The name's Roberts, James Roberts. The name's Johnson, Marty Johnson. Bond superfans. Like James and Martin from Bond Down Under. I feel sorry for the seven, the double oh seven guy, because um, he's following big, you know, footsteps. If I was to shoot you in the chest, what have you got stopping that bullet? I have the very first, or my very first copy of Casino Royale. It was given to me by a friend and got me into the literary side of the James Bond and Fleming's James Bond. And Jake, Brent, and Darby, who have bonded making a podcast. Trey Bond. Three best buds talking about the greatest film franchise ever made. There's plenty to talk about, like the best Bond film. 2006's Casino Royale, not only is it the best Bond film, it's the best film ever made. Goldeneye, Pierce Brosnan's debut James Bond. I think that Casino Royale was number one, Goldfinger was number two, Skyfall number three, and I now put No Time to Die at number four. And of course, who's the best Bond? People argue that, you know, Connery's the best. Pierce Brosnan sort of spliced elements of Connery and Moore. Moore was too camp, Dalton was too serious, Lazenby wasn't taken seriously enough. Sean Connery, number one. Daniel Craig, a very close number two. So I'm actually a big Timothy Dalton fan. Really? Um, just his portrayal, the man who gave to it. He's a very Fleming Bond. It's like picking your favourite kid. Everyone can do it, but they don't say it on national television. <laughs> The thought of a new Bond has fans both shaken and stirred. It'll, it'll be that kind of person that you're like, oh, that's the guy from that Netflix show that I love. Yeah. And you can never remember his name. There's some people that really want to go left of field. You've got a vast majority of traditionalists. There's a sense of, of the unknown. There's a sense of the unexpected. And there's a sense of, of, of what's come before. There's also age to consider. They want somebody who's about the right age, maybe late 30s, maybe middle 30s, who can then move into 
10, 15 years of making Bond movies just as Daniel Craig did. Jamie Bell is of that right age. He's also that kind of right profile, a similar profile to Daniel Craig was just before he was cast as, as Bond. So there's a sense as well of, of, of making an actor out of, 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 of them becoming Bond. I don't know what you want me to say. I think um, Ms. Brockley and, and Mr. G. Wilson will probably discover a new Bond who is completely off our radar. And what about a wild card from Down Under? There's an Australian actor called Remy He that we went to, yeah. we went to NIDA with. He's yeah. terrific. Marco Polo, he's been in Spider-Man. Everything must be perfect. Do we run the risk of getting caught? He might not be a household name, but maybe he could be Bond. Could be in the running. Next October marks the 60th anniversary of Dr. No, the film that started it all. And Bond fans are confident there's many more to come. It's a chapter closed. The most exciting is actually what's coming. There is life in Bond after Daniel Craig. The James Bond movies will go on as long as movies, I reckon. Bond. James Bond. Get the feeling Stevie Marshall might be throwing his hat in the ring. <laughs> coming up next, Kim...